Welcome back, everyone, to more Hellblade Set of a Sacrifice. So, we have a little bit of a thing to spoil here for you guys. Um, sadly... You know what happens at the end? The credits. <laughs> exactly. Uh, sadly, we had a little bit of a hiccup when it came to recording, and because of hard drive difficulties, we actually lost some of the audio we recorded. In particular, the audio that went with a video about the Trials of Grammar. So... This is going to happen a little out of time for people. We, you are going to still see the trials, and we're going to try and keep quiet when we go to, go to runes and all that. But there Speaking you go. Of. The Northmen tell of a great hero. His name is Sigmund. His father's hall was built around a great tree, and one day, Odin comes and thrusts a sword into the tree, a gift to whomever can release it. Many try. But the sword only comes out at Sigmund's touch. His brother-in-law, King Sigir, wants it. But Sigmund refuses him. So King Sigir plots revenge. He invites Sigmund and his brothers to a feast. But when they arrive, they are met with an army, not a warm welcome. King Sigir captures Sigmund and his brothers, steals his coveted sword, and readies them for execution. Okay, so we're going to still try and keep quiet on, during the cutscenes and all that so you guys can enjoy it. But just to bring people up to speed, this is going to be a little outside of time as we have finished Hellblade as yeah. at this point. Um, if, in case you didn't see the Shadow Blazers tweet that we had. Um, we have finished it, and so these next three parts are basically covering the Trials of Grammar. Uh, and I think... Two of them are going to have one, and then one will have two. So you guys can check that out. I saw once a plague strike northern lands of ice. It was so terrible that not the oldest man among us could remember the like. Hundreds died. The sickness took nearly every person younger than 40 and many older. And where dying mothers gave birth, the marks of the plague were on the babes as they came out of the womb. So the cool part here is that you can, these technically... Where are we? Oh. I don't like it. This place feels... What is this place? Oh yeah, there we go. So now we're officially entering the, the trial. The cool part is about these trials is that they almost feel like they're Senua's memories. Yeah. Um, so like really nasty things that happened in Senua's village and she witnessed them. And now you kind of witness them again as part of the trials. And as you as you guys can see, the goal of this is to just follow Dillion and um, get yourself through the trial so you can claim the Shard of Grammar. But we're going to have to go through some nasty water to get that to work. Some plague-infested water. It's a test. Like the old warrior trial. And I, so now we can kind of talk about this game in retrospect. We're, we're not going to give full on reviews because we actually did one at the end. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting to go through this stuff in retrospect because the stench of rot. like almost every major she pivotal moment in this tested. game has been a what Disney. probably is like a dark memory in Zeno's life. Yeah. So like this one is when a plague hit her village. Um. I'm trying to think of other stuff that's happened since, the, like, when, when fire hit the village, that's where the cert happened. She could taste the rot. Oh, no. But no one else could. She knew something was wrong, something sinister. She begged them to leave, but they just laughed at her. But soon enough, as the bodies piled up, no one was laughing. And they knew that she was not like them. She was an outsider. She was different. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm making fun of the narrative just a little bit, but <laughs> it's not it's not a bad way. Yeah. It's like, you know, you've heard this stuff before, guys. In every X-Men comic, you've heard it. But yeah, all of these seem to be, like, dark memories of Senua's past, and I haven't confirmed that, but Fix it. it yeah, wouldn't be surprising. Quick, get to the house. Now, the one thing that's an, an advantage here is, since we're having to do this post-commentary, 
this we're gonna cut out a lot of the puzzle solving time. Yeah, so you guys don't get have to lost. Deal with it. But this is best, basically the first time we dealt with what eventually turned out to kind of be a bane to us: the glass shard puzzles. Yeah, uh, because it's so hard to figure out like how they're assembled. Uh, so you guys kind of miss out on a lot of the recording this time around, which was trying to figure those damn puzzles out. The Northmen speak of a death moon, a light shaped like a half moon that appears inside a house and goes around the walls. I once saw the death moon appear at a farm, and first the shepherd died, then a guest died, and then the farm hands, and then the farmer and six of his men drowned at sea. But that is not the end of it, because the dead return to haunt the living. If you see the death moon, then beware, because there will be death in that house. It's like that red moon in Lord of the Rings, the two, uh, two towers. The moon is blood red. Blood has been spilled this night. You did it. I think it was a red dawn. That's or yeah, it was a red dawn. Yeah. Blood has been spilled this night. Okay, so thankfully you guys don't have to go through the whole process of us trying to figure out what the hell we did wrong here. You found a way to assemble the bridge. But I, I'm just gonna warn people in advance: these glass shard puzzles are like the bane of our existence. We, we had such trouble trying to figure these damn things out. Yeah, we really did. Um, just because, like, we figured we had them, and then all of a sudden we realized, no, we were at the wrong angle for them. So here we go. You guys can kind of already see, like, we're, we're having issues already. <laughs> this isn't good. Thankfully, this wasn't the worst puzzle we had. That's coming later. And that one took, that one took, what, 30 minutes to solve, ultimately? <laughs> yeah, probably. Because we couldn't get the right angle for the, for the, the puzzle. See, we're not even looking in the right direction. What the heck is wrong with us, Alex? Oh, I do not know. I don't know, but it's not our fault. We just, we, this was our first attempt at it, so we didn't even know what we were doing. There we go. So this is ultimately how you solve it. You just have to look at, at the right area from the right angle, and boom! She did it. She did it. You fixed the bridge. So now the bridge is fixed. Now we can go and find Dillion. The bridge is fixed. Yay! The bridge is fixed. Your Final Fantasy can begin, Alex. Terrific. Yay! Go fight, go fight the four fiends and claim the four orbs. Of the elements, I mean crystals, I mean orbs, <laughs> and uh, you'll be fine. Now I need to make a pro Jared joke. Gee, an epic, an epic quest where you have to gather four treasures of the elements. I've never heard of that one before. Wait, what? Okay, so go up the stairs, and the blue light in the farm, huh? But darkness has come over it. Darkness no. falls. The darkness of the pox. It is spreading. And this is just disturbing imagery now that you look at it and you're not playing the game. Because, like, there's corpses piled up. Come to me. Where are you? I'm here. I'm right here. Are you in this? Find him. Come out. Yay, Alex. It's our favorite thing to do. <laughs> Solve the runes. They're coming for me. Oh, and it's this room. So, this is basically a a running gauntlet to find the runes. And it's very difficult because you have to. You basically have to keep on the move. You guys will actually see where we died once. Trying to do this, but so we're we're near the area that will give us the rune. There it is. Come on, grab it. Boom. That's one. And I turn the wrong way, and the fire claims us. Ah, fire hot. Oh, it's all this. It's the fire's all disjointed too. That doesn't that doesn't help the imagery at all. Okay, so. 
basically, yeah, you don't want to turn into the fire and the corruption spreads. Dun, dun, dun. But technically, I think we had to restart the puzzle, didn't we? Yeah, yeah we, did. we had to go and get the, the first it's one close, again. Thankfully, we knew where it was. So all you gotta do is just follow the blue light and Dillian just kind of guides you to him. But now we've learned our lesson. We can't go this way. No, can't so go that way. This way. That fire. It's so dastardly. Keep going, Sadoa. There's a blue light. Follow it. Dillian is trying to help you. Head towards the light. But not, not the other light. Not the other light. The, that won't help you. Okay, so that's where our next rune is. Unless you're in Poltergeist and trapped in your TV. I wouldn't know. I'm not allowed to watch that movie. <laughs> well, I guess I could, but uh, considering how my father and older brother took to it, I probably will never watch it. Yeah, it's pretty scary. It actually kind of is. <laughs> I can't find you! Oh. So I could totally have gone that way, but fire, fire hot, fire! Come on, okay, almost there, almost there. There's Dillian. Oh no! Whoa! And there you go. Grab, grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. Get Lord Zed symbol. Yay! <laughs> that is Lord Zed symbol. Send oh. down my buddies. I will send down my buddies. <laughs> I can't do Robert Axelrod. <laughs> I wish I could. Okay. <laughs> use it on the door. There you go. Unless you, I think you can yeah, use Armadillo Mom. I'm Armadillo Mom. I'm Armadillo Did you really play Armadillo Mom? Yeah, you did. Oh my gosh. So there you go. We got achieve, the achievement cure for the plague. Just trying to keep the Balrog out. It's not an easy task. He also does wizard mom. Sanua! Sanua! What happened? They're blaming me for the plague. They say that I'm cursed. What if they're right? How would they know such a thing? Are they gods? None of us are. They're just people. Good people, but they're scared. They're afraid of what they can't see. Like children scared of the dark. They make up stories to fill the void. It doesn't make them true. What if my father was right? You have to step out of this darkness. Let them see who you really are, like I am. You're not a monster. I appreciate Dillian's efforts, but that is easier said than done. Hmm. Um, Without you, this darkness has made me a monster. You know what, Alex? After playing this game, I'm actually starting to think you're right at the very beginning. Like, this isn't this isn't probably a Norse culture, but rather a village that got absorbed into Norse culture. Yeah. Because the, the only thing that doesn't make sense to me is Dillian does not make sense as a Norseman. He's way too... He's way too compassionate. Considering that, you know, Viking culture is a warrior kind of culture. I want to tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur, the second son of Odin. He was beautiful, good, and wise. He was fair of feature. He spoke fair words. He gave fair judgments. Light shone from him. Only good things were told of him. Yet he was the first of the gods to die. I mean, the story kind of paints Dillian as as a, an exceptional fighter, 
So I mean, at that point, maybe he could have survived because he could he could defend himself. Mm. But like in that culture, I just don't see it being something like a Norse boy would not be raised that way, would not be as compassionate as he is. So I'm starting to wonder. I think you've got validity. In yeah. Your I think this is just this is a culture that got absorbed into Norse culture. Yeah. Well, Sunna was described as I think it was like a pig, like a. <laughs> And uh, we narrowed it down like it, it's a part of like what is now Great Britain that was annexed by Norway back there in the okay, back so. in the Viking times. Okay, yeah, there, there you go. So that that explains Senua. Senua would have been killed in Norse culture, I think. Um, they wouldn't have even like debated with it. But Dillian, like, he would not be as compassionate as he is. Well, you know, I, it kind of begs the question. Uh, that... And I, I, I want to make sure that this is clear. I'm not knocking Dillian. I no. like I like Dillian. I like Senua. But it's just, to me, it's like, yeah, these, these elements do not exist in this kind of a culture, I don't think. Not the way that that culture is, is portrayed. The Northmen tell this story about the death of Baldur. It begins with dark dreams. Night after night, Baldur dreams of his own death, and the gods fear for his life. So Baldur's mother makes everything in the world. Fire, water, iron, stone, earth, wood, beasts, birds, serpents, poison, sickness. Swear an oath not to harm her son. One by one, they each make their vow. Neither weapons nor wood will injure him, Baldur's mother boasts. Only Loki, father of Hela, the mistress of death, is not amused. Wow, Loki got busy? <laughs> There's like a dozen Tom Hiddleston fans that are immediately disappointed. Okay, yeah, she's from... The Orkney Islands, which are a cluster of islands on the tip of Great Britain. Yeah, so they got absorbed into North Cult. Although I, I will say this, I think Druth's, Druth is North, or is Norse, mm -hmm. because he has a lot of knowledge that I think would have been taught to like a Norse boy. But Dillian, yeah, he's definitely not. And now it makes sense, like, this is how they survived. They were exceptional fighters. So at that point, like, the Norse aren't going to necessarily take away a, an awesome fighter yeah. from their cast. And this is this game is set sometime in the 8th century. Yeah. And actually, so this is this is the one that was the bane of our existence. This damn puzzle. <laughs> yeah, we got really lost um, here. <laughs> I'm not even going to be honest. Like, this part, we don't even solve it. But, yeah, this was such a bane of our existence uh, trial that all of the other ones, like, I, I would gladly go through those other trials again than having to go through this, and I know the solution to this now. But again, back to what we we're saying. I, I, I'm, I'm still sticking to my guns here. I think Druth is is a Norseman. So at that point, like that's that explains why he knows the stories of Baldur, of Sigmund, of of Odin, mm -hmm. and all that, and it makes sense for him to know them. Are we finding the puzzle? No, we're really not, people. This was that much of a pain in the ass. <laughs> like, th this is probably the one time where this game made me cringe horribly. Because this this puzzle was just that complex. She will. And now we're going to get all the people who say, I did this when I was five. Yeah, <laughs> Good I for you. This in You're... Five minutes and not and even break a sweat. Well, okay, good for you. Good for You're you. smart. <laughs> Double or nothing. The the other trials that I aced through, you probably had problems with, and that's fine. My issue is is that I'm obviously not looking at it from the right perspective, and I'm I'll own it. I'm okay with it now. I wasn't when we did this, but I'm okay with it now. Go through the gate. Go through it. It's dangerous. Follow it. Is there an enemy at the gates? I don't know. Dillian, there he is. So, yeah, Dillian is in the house. Where is he? Where is he? 
Yay! So now you just step in here. And this is technically the puzzle that got us, but we haven't figured out the solution yet. Black and white. Darkness and light. Narrow dividing lines of our own making. And we'll go ahead and continue this on part 15. Okay.